if you have been part of the various debates regarding the balance of DVD, you probably heard this particular phrase more than once, Dead by Daylight is at its best state it has ever been. Whether you personally agree with this take or not, I decided to look at it from a more objective manner. So today, let's take a brief look into the history of the game and see what DVD meta was the most toxic and damaging overall. This video will cover the metas that were, in my opinion, the worst, so not all pair combinations or tactics will be featured. And what better way to begin this video with one of the oldest, if not the oldest meta the game has ever had, the Infinites meta. Whereas most of the metas we will talk about in this video are related to certain perk combos that are overpowered, when the game released, the amount of perk variety was extremely low. There were some outliers in perk combinations like self-care combined with will make it, which boosted your healing speed so fast that you could literally heal instantly after a killer hit you, but this was not overly abused because the community was smaller, the game was not as popular, and finding an abusable perk was very rare. In fact, most survivors had no idea how to loop and they hid or played in a very poor way as the game was still considered a horror game. But the survivors that didn't fear the killer and that understood the mechanics of the game those players instantly discovered a mechanic that was impossible to counter, infinites. An infinite was a loop where it was impossible to catch up as a killer. These could exist because a lot of map layouts were completely different and had windows open, and the killers could vault them significantly lower than they can now. Not only that, but survivors could vault the windows as fast vault as the medium vault mechanic was not created yet so it didn't matter at what angle you entered the window, and if things couldn't get worse, the entity blocker did not exist yet. During this time, it was impossible to catch up or counter unless you were a trapper and used one of your bear traps to block a window, or you were a nurse, and this is why the nurse was created, as she could bypass any infinites and she instantly became the strongest killer in the game by far, which still holds true to this day. I think that out of all the metas in the entire game, this was the only one that had literally no counter to it. If a survivor started abusing an infinite and you were not the nurse, you lost. It was impossible to do anything about it and it required no perks or specific characters either, as you could do it as long as you knew what you were doing. Another extremely broken mechanic in DBD that led to a very terrible meta for a long while was the sabotage mechanics in DVD, which is one of the most popular old metas in the history of the game. The concept was pretty simple. If you use the perk saboteur or a toolbox in order to break a hook, that hook was permanently broken until the end of the match. To think that this mechanic was in the game is crazy nowadays. Now some can argue that the brand new part add-on was even more broken than the hooks, but I still think they were not enough to create a meta itself. After all, the add-on was iridescent, and the blood point gain back in the days was basically minimal. However, anyone could bring Saboteur as a perk, or a yellow toolbox, and break any hooks they wanted since the perk did not have a cooldown yet. The only solution killers had in the case of survivors deciding to break all hooks is to slug them and patiently wait until they bled out one by one, or attempt to bring them to the basement hooks. This led to one specific build for killers to become the absolute meta, that was Iron Grasp, Agitation, Unrelenting and Deer Stalker. Try running that build now and see how far you can reach in a kill streak. The hook automatic repair would only be integrated to the game on patch 1.5.0, released on April 27th of 2027, so the sabotage meta lasted for less than a year. Or so you might think, because the original cooldown for a hook respawning was 3 minutes, so it basically still meant that survivors could sabotage all your hooks and force you to slug. If things couldn't get any better, on March 8th, Bill was introduced to the game, with the perk Unbreakable, which completely countered slugging as a mechanic, which is why it became so popular to run and became a staple in the meta loadouts for survivors to this day. And just in case you weren't aware, 
you could sabotage the trapper's bear traps leaving him powerless. This is why the sabotage perk icon was changed from a bear trap to a hook being broken. The fun thing is that the saboteur playstyle did not die until very late in the game's development cycle, as they introduced a complete rework to the sabotage and hook respawning mechanics on the patch that brought the Chains of Hate update. I still think that the first ever true meta was created with the release of the very first licensed DLC in Dead by Daylight, a DLC that to this day remains at the top in terms of impact to the game, and that is the Halloween DLC, which introduced fantastic perks that would be part of four different metas, but I think the craziest perk by far was Original Decisive Strike. Nowadays Decisive Strike is almost a joke, killers don't fear it anymore and tunneling is extremely rampant because of it, but back in the days Decisive Strike was one of the scariest perks to ever exist and you had to assume that literally everyone was running it, because if you didn't then you would get massively punished. Original Decisive Strike worked completely different to now, as it was not an anti-tunnel perk, instead it was a literal get out of jail free card. Once the killer picked you up, you could hit a hard skill check in order to escape the killer's grasp once per trial, and stunning them for 5 seconds, no ifs and no buts. This basically meant that survivors had 3 health states per chase and combine this with the absurdly crazy broken loops that existed back then and you have one of the most toxic and miserable metas that have ever existed in DVD. Later on, on patch 1.4.0, a mechanic was added that if you were not the obsession, you had to struggle a bit before you could escape from the killer's grasp, but this still meant that 4 survivors could use this perk in a match, and that is when a killer tactic was invented in order to counter this absolute monster of a perk. Do you recognize what I am doing? Because if you do, then you deserve a veteran's discount. The idea was simple, once you picked up a survivor, you moved a little bit towards the hook and you dropped them again, then you repeat the process until you can reach the hook. This was called dribbling because you were literally dribbling the survivors to a hook, and this was because the Decisive Strike activated once you were on the killer's grasp, and not while the pickup animation was playing as it is now. The Decisive Strike only became an anti-tunnel perk with the introduction of the plague, so this meant that the perk was extremely overpowered for two years straight. It's also interesting to note that the game during that time was undeniably pay to win, since anyone who did not buy the Halloween DLC was at a significant disadvantage compared to the rest of players, but nobody wants to hear that DBD was built on pay to win practices, so it doesn't matter. But Decisive Strike was not the only perk introduced in the Halloween DLC that completely changed the meta, as killers also received a new toy to play with, save the best for last. This perk worked slightly different in the past, as it gave you a 33% reduced cooldown on successful hits as long as the obsession was alive, or in other words, what is currently the full stacks of the perk. But not only that, Unrelenting also worked completely different, and instead of only working on missed attacks, it also worked on successful attacks, reducing their cooldown by 22%. These two perks combined reduced the successful cooldown for 55%, so your attacks were extremely quick and you could down survivors very fast without letting them escape or reach a window or pallet. This was called the machine gun meta, and it was possibly the very first popular meta combo to exist in the game, as everyone was running it. Take a look at the speed at which the killer recovers from the attacks. Funnily enough, the only killer that could not use this combo is the nurse as she had the fatigue. The speed was so fast that it was basically impossible to successfully trade or escape from the basement, and body blocking was not even a possibility. The machine gun term was not only exclusive to these two overpowered perks, Tinker also worked different, and instead it boosted the power of recharge add-ons that any killers had. Tinker combined with the Huntress and her cooldown add-ons created an entirely new monster in the game, 
which was the machine gun huntress. You could instantly charge your hatchets and if you had good aim, you could end chases in less than 5 seconds. So basically, if you played DVD around 2017, you were probably tired of hearing the term machine gun in every single build video. It's like the Volt Speed build videos before Spine Chill was nerfed. I mentioned that the Halloween DLC created 4 different metas in DVD by itself. We talked about the Decisive Strike meta and the Machine Gun meta. However, those two didn't last that long in comparison to the Object of Obsession meta. Now, I have previously talked about this perk, so I will sum it up very quickly. With this perk equipped, you could see the killers through walls at any time as long as you were looking in their direction. This meant that if we were a Survive with Friends team, you could be communicating the position of the killer on real time to the rest of the team and this had basically no counter because this perk existed before the undetectable status effect was introduced. Even if you were the pig or Freddy Krueger or if you used Insidious, you still were visible to the survivors. This made stealth killers obsolete and killers like Trapper were useless. Another problem from the wall hacks that this perk had is that you could play and loop extremely easy as it removed any mind game opportunities the killers have. As long as a survivor can loop well or even hold W, you already had a tremendous advantage compared to any player. This was extremely abused by pro survivors as it was very easy to use, but it was also rare compared to the machine gun or decisive strike metas as this tactic required a good survivor and the survive with friends on discord and despite what a lot of people think not all survivors are in a survive with friends as most played solo for this reason the devs did not decide to nerf this perk despite its extremely abusive nature because the majority of survivors didn't use it and in fact they also claimed that survivors using this perk were dying more in comparison to other survivors recent statistics on this thing and it's not used very often and the survivors that use it don't have a particularly high escape rate so it doesn't okay. seem like it's an amazingly effective perk completely missing the part that killers would want to tunnel these survivors in order to prevent their location from being revealed to the rest the perk only received a nerf on patch 4.7.0 after the tricksters release making Object of Obsession one of the metas that lasted the most in the game. But you probably noticed that I said the Halloween DLC had perks that took part in 4 metas, but I only mentioned 3. And now that I named the patch 4.7.0, it's time to talk about Forever Freddy, as this was the patch where the build completely died. Forever Freddy is, for most people in the player base, one of the most annoying and boring meta builds that have ever existed in the game. If you combined Dying Light, Thanatophobia, Hex Ruin and Sloppy Butcher with the Swing Chain and Jump Rope add-ons, you could completely slow the game down by making James take longer to repair. All of the effects combined in the past led to over a 50% speed reduction to repairing and healing, and Freddy didn't have to do anything besides hitting survivors normally. For reference, this is more than having 3 stacks of Pentimento applied at all times. This was by far one of the most painful and toxic metas to have ever happened in DVD, as it was guaranteed that you would die of boredom before repairing even one generator in the match. This Freddy meta lasted from the 9th of July 2019 up to before mentioned patch 4.7.0 which released on the 13th of April of 2021, lasting two entire years. During those years, Freddy Krueger was one of the strongest and easiest killers to play in DVD and in my opinion, it is possibly the most toxic build to have ever existed in the game. Not many times does a perk release into the game that completely changes the entire meta with its existence. And in this video, I also wanted to focus on the toxic metas that existed for a long periods of time, like over a year. But no content creator 
can make a video talking about metas without mentioning Metal of Man, one of the most overpowered perks in the history of DVD. With the surprise release of Ash Williams, three new perks were introduced in the game, with Metal of Man being one of them, and this perk was absolutely crazy and one of the most pay to win features ever added. I don't even have to explain anything about this perk as I think its original description does the job of explaining itself pretty well. Just by reading the part where it says the down state is ignored should raise various red flags. This was extremely abused as it literally meant survivors had another health state that killers would have to chew through and everyone could use this perk, so it stacked in the match. This perk didn't even put you in deep wound when it said the hit was ignored. It literally meant that the hit was ignored and only gave the speed boost. Now luckily, this meta was the shortest one in the entire video, as it only lasted for one patch. Still, the fact that this perk is still remembered to this day speaks volumes on how crazy that small period of time was. Another fun fact was that the perk released literally after the original decisive strike was nerfed, so if the devs took one patch longer to change it, it would have meant that Metal of Man and decisive strike would have coexisted, and thank god this never happened. It's funny how both of those perks are basically jokes nowadays. A perk that most players are probably wondering when it will appear on this video is Hex Ruin. And yes, Hex Ruin, especially the original one, was one of the most meta perks for killers for a long time. The original Hex Ruin made it so that every skill check was cursed, and if you hit it normally, you actually lost progress. If you hit the great skill check part, the gens continued like normal with no progress. This perk was very strong against below average survivors, so most of the time, the game's gen defense was entirely reliant on RNG. If survivors got lucky and they found ruin early, the killer was playing with only 3 perks. However, if they were unlucky and the killer ended up sacrificing someone, then most likely the match was lost. Hex ruin was so popular that survivors invented a new tactic called gen tapping, which was literally tapping the generators in order to prevent skill checks from appearing. Despite this potentially taking longer to do than repairing the generator normally or trying to find ruin, this was still a popular tactic as most survivors were just tired of repairing. Hex Ruin was later completely reworked into a similar design that we have now. As long as the hex was unbroken, generators automatically regressed by themselves. A lot of killers criticized this rework as it made the perk significantly more active than before, as instead of working passively like the past Hex Ruin, now you had to defend the generators yourself. The issue began when the perk Hex Undying was introduced, which instantly became meta along with the reward Hex Ruin. But for those of you that forgot, Hex Undying worked differently originally. Instead of being like an insurance for your Hex perks, it was a singular Hex that as long as it was unbroken, any of the other hexes would transfer to the dual totem. This meant that if you were unlucky, you had to break 4 hex totems in order to get rid of hex ruin. This made the DVD meta completely RNG reliant. Hex Undying was reworked into what we have now, which was met with a lot of pushback by killer players again. However, I think hex ruin's worst moment was by far when it was combined with Rework Tinker into one of the strongest builds in the entire game. The Blight running with Hex Ruin, Hex Undying, Tinker and Pop Goes the Weasel. This build was the absolute meta and best build you could run with the Blight and it was basically unwinnable, as Tinker didn't proc only once per generator but instead it worked every time the gen was regressed so you could infinitely pressure generators with survivors not being able to do anything. This is the reason why I think the devs decided to butcher Hex Ruin, especially now, because I think they do not want the Hex Ruin and Hex Undying meta to return. All of those perks drastically lost their usage after the meta changing 6.1.0 patch or the legendary 
Dead Heart Nerf update. And since I mentioned this perk, let's talk about Dead Heart, the most overpowered exhaustion perk in the game. I do not want to waste much of my time talking about it as the background footage is enough. Instead, I want to remind most players that Death Heart was completely unchanged for 5 years. 5 entire years. If this fact is not mind blowing to you, I don't think anything else in this video will be impressive. Now before we go into the last recent meta that DVD has had, I wanted to quickly mention a meta that was extremely annoying, and that is the Boons Circle of Healing appearance with the introduction of Michaela Raid. Of the Vault Perks in DVD, this was the first one to completely shake up the gameplay for survivors as it added a secondary objective to the game with the introduction of the booning mechanic. The problem was that boons were extremely overpowered and they completely killed the hit and run tactics that some killers like Wraith, Ghostface, Pig or Hag used. It made healing extremely trivial, giving everyone a free self-care in a very big radius and forcing killers to go out of their way in order to turn the boons off. This was pretty bad, but the reason I mention this as an honorable mention is because I still think boons have not disappeared and they are still very strong. A lot of players are sleeping on Shadow Step and Circle of Healing is still a very good perk. There were definitely more metas in the game, like the DMS Pain Resonance combo or the hit and run tactics with Sloppy Butcher and a Nurse's Calling, the anti pallet build with Enduring and Spirit Fury and plenty more, but I titled this video as the most toxic metas and I personally do not think that those were bad to the game. What was bad to the game, and most people will agree, is the 3 gen meta. It all started with a 6.1.0 patch, which gutted Hex Ruin and Pop Goes the Weasel. No matter what, the players will always find replacements in order to make their game easier. And this is how Eruption, Call of Brian and Overcharge became a staple on any killer build. As long as you had these perks equipped, you could win any game, it was absurdly broken and easy to proc. Unlike any of the healthy metas like Pop Goes the Weasel or Pain Resonance, all you had to do was kick a generator and patrol it. So you could set a 3 gen from the start and keep defending those generators with not much that the survivors can do. If that was not enough to make this meta bad, Behavior released two bad killers back to back, the Knight and the School Merchant, which excelled at defending generators and stalling the matches for over hours. This was ridiculous and you didn't have to do much to win. The difference between this specific meta and any of the past ones is that any killer was able to stall the games for long enough. This was not exclusive to School Merchant or the Knight. If you were a nurse, spirit, doctor, nemesis, oni, blight, it didn't matter. Eruption, Call of Brian and Overcharge could single-handedly carry you to victory by boredom and it worked on any character you desire. So now that we have talked about the most toxic metas in the history of the game, it's time to ask the question, which meta was the absolute worst in your opinion? And you might be shocked, but in my personal opinion, it was the recent DVD meta of late 2022 and this year. I have played since the start and I perfectly remember how survivors abused Metal of Man against me, I lived through the broken decisive strike or object of obsession abuse, I had to endure various forever Freddy's back when he was one of the most popular characters and I gave up on the various matches against blights that ran Hex Ruin and Tinker, but no meta felt as stale as the generator kick one. This meta completely ruined two characters for me, the knight and the school merchant, and in all honesty completely broke my will to play the game like no other meta has. I literally don't play DVD for entertainment anymore, because I find it extremely boring. I do not like the direction the game is going, and I feel like tunneling is like never before. The game is miserable to play as a solo survivor and it's a mix between a very easy game as a killer or one of the most frustrating matches I will ever play. And I think that's the key here, the game is frustrating to play, it's not fun, it's not crazy like back in the days 
It's just boring and frustrating. There is nothing positive in the community even. I was completely involved in the game's community since 2016. I had a lot of fun watching developer streams and the small feeling of community that we had back then. The theories we made for future updates, the cool new pair combos and builds that were created. But nowadays, the community is extremely entitled. It's literally complaining about the playstyle of others 24-7. Slugging, tunneling, stream sniping, camping, gen rushing, bullying, that's what everyone in the community is talking about. And it has become extremely boring to interact with the DVD community. I made this video specifically to remind all of you that we as players had to endure some crazy stuff. And I have never seen this amount of crying and toxicity in the community from people literally doxing others because of how they choose to play and the non-stopping amount of bigots in the community or constant negativity towards the devs and their developers with the recent Steam review boycott. The problem we have in the game is above what tactic is the most optimal or what killer is overpowered. It's now beyond the game. It's the entitlement meta and this is the worst state I have ever seen.